This fort was built by the Portuguese in the year 1515. Now, it took 12 years completing this fort. It started in 1503 and it completed in 1515. Fort St. Anthony was solely built with stone, lime, and clay. Stone, lime, and clay, which was used in building the fort. The graveyard you see here is the graveyard of the army commander, Portuguese commander, which is J.M. Gomez. Gomez died here and Gomez was buried here. Currently, we are in a slave court here where every morning the slaves will be marked here at the law of nature states, ladies first. Machine. Corn or maize will be placed in water for three days. Now, on the third day, the strong men will pound and then later I'll give it to the woman and they also grind it. So, they use this stone. These are representatives, these are not the original stones to grind the maize. What is this here? Now, this is an oven for mm. baking. Okay. So, it was the Portuguese who introduced bread to our people okay. over here. Okay. Our people were not taking bread. We were also having our own style of bread. Okay. But the word bread in our local language is pano. Pano. But now, when you come to in the Zima land, we say pano. Mm -hmm. Same as the way the Portuguese also mentioned it, pano. And then, in fact, you say pano, that's something you say brodo. And uh, the words like bokiti they were introduced by them the Europeans because our people were not having buckets they were using pots and it's like supati which is a sandal was also introduced by them so we have some of our language we was inherited from our colonial masters into our system now this is our cannon mm -hmm. for defense bigger ones are in Almina and Cape Coast these are smaller ones. These are smaller ones. Now, the reason why Fort Antony was built was purposely built for trading. So, at that time, the Dutch Way Trade Center was at Zim. So, they had a West Indian company right here mm -hmm. in Zim. So, they were trading in gold, ivory, other commodities, and also not as much as what the Dutch did. Okay. So the Dutch did more humans. Yes. Yeah, I tell people the Dutch, the dirty Dutch, the dirty Dutch. Yes. So in, in 1632, the Dutch took over the country. Now in 1634, they signed new treaties with our chiefs. Now from there, we have two chiefs since those days to that. We have the lower town chief, which okay. is, that is his policy. Okay. The Okay. So they signed new trainees and they started trading. So the Dutch lived in the land of Benzema until 1872 where the British took over. The Dutch kept losing to the British. Yes. <laughs> it was constant. <laughs> so, South Africa everywhere. The Dutch kept losing. So they had a, an argument with the British so they exchanged forts and castles. Mm. At that time, the British has already had their own way of colonization, that is democracy. And you know, a lot of people don't realize that all forms of colonization weren't the same. The British different from the Dutch, the exactly. French different from the, the uh, Portuguese. Portuguese. It was the all very, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when they came, they've already made the people aware that the Dutch are here for their people they were more treating them, they were against their own rights and stuff. So they had that in their mind. So when they exchanged forts and castles, now the people were not one with the Dutch when it went to the fort of the British. Okay. So they began to fight. So that is where the Dutch went in alliance with Asantis and also fought the British. So the Asantis and the Dutch got together against the British. Against the British. Interesting. And the British went along with the coastal people mm. and fought the Asantis. That's so was that the Fanti? The Asantis. Okay. So in on the coastal belt we have the Enzimans, we have the Infantis. Okay, so the Fantis fought the Ashantis yes, with along the Dutch with and the, the British. British. And fought the Dutch and the isn't it? There, there's there are people in America who say the slave trade never happened. They say this stuff never happened. Of course, it did happen. There, there's a, there's, a, there's a people in America saying this never happened. Oh, uh, because they don't know the story. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. Until you know their history. If 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 Dutch could if the Dutch could let their people come here to come and see what really happened here, mm -hmm. 
to, to, to fulfill their story. For example, if a Dutch son who knows that his father was part of this colonial masters, the traders and stuff, he wants to complete the story. Until he comes to Africa, he can't complete the story. Because his father once came to Africa and probably maybe he had children here. Until he comes here to fulfill the, without his fault. If this fault gets destroyed, mm -hmm. that family's history is cut short. Well, you know, these are black people in America who say it never well, happened. I don't blame them because that's why they have been brainwashed. Because even there are blacks in America or wherever in yeah. Europe that yeah. they think that Africa is one country. That Africans even live on trees. Yes. Until they get here, they see the difference. And I don't blame them. Keep on pushing the message when they come back. Well, wow. this is Isaac Jenny of Florida. Oh, wow. From that's the no that this is Axum's no return. Yes, yeah, in general of no return. So this is where slaves should be marched here. Get down from the staircase, get up from the ladder, go straight through a tunnel and exit on the island. Mm. So while the people were trading out there, the people the slaves were being smuggled. And like the tunnel had been sealed. That was concealed? Yes, that was sealed by the British in 1872 when they came into the front. Let me see if I can get down in here. There are many doors of no return along the coast of West Africa. From Senegal all the way down the coast, I mean even into the South Africa, Southern African region. Cape Coast Dungeon, Elmina Dungeon, Gory Island, Bunce Island, uh, these different dungeons get a lot of popular recognition because uh, for the most part they're preserved uh, except for Bunce Island. But there were houses, forts, dungeons, different places where people were herded through like cattle. And this is just another one here at Fort St. Anthony in Axum where you see human beings were traded, abused, raped, exploited, taken advantage of. Look at Alzina Castle. Right. Axim Fort was full. So Axim Fort is the oldest fort and the second European structure to be built in Ghana. So when Officials come for trading. Azima was so rich in commodities, gold, mentioned what they trade in. So Azima was the only place, taking it from Senegal down to this place, where officials would spend more than three days. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the rooms when they come, they do occupy. So they would leave Gory Island in Senegal yeah. and come here. And this is where they would stay. Yes. In these rooms. Those who come purposely for trading. Okay. Is this open? No, no it's not. Okay. Sometimes I don't get weaker because of the breeze. Understood. Now, the floor that we're working on currently was changed in 1872. Mm -hmm. From 1872 to then, we only maintain it. This is, the, this is the original floor? It's the original floor. From 1872? Yes. And these bricks, these are Portuguese bricks or Dutch bricks, the yellow ones? The yellow ones are for the Portuguese. Portuguese, okay. Because yes. I see ones, ones, the red ones, ones are Dutch. Yes. Because I see them over in um, Elmina. That kind of very small nation, but it's very powerful. Yeah, the, the Dutch was something else. It's like you, the, the Portuguese too. Yeah, the Portuguese are very powerful. I was saying, then, but they, but they but were tiny. Today. No, they're not so much today, but they have Brazil. Brazil is like their main yeah, colony. Yes, yes. And then they have, you know, Sao Tome and uh, Guinea-Bissau and, and Angola and Mozambique. Exactly. These are all Portuguese speaking. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. For, for sure, they can't say Brazil is their main colony, but that's where it was when they dropped just the slaves. Okay. Right, that's what they did. I went to Brazil and I saw okay. all the black people. Yeah. I was like, whoa, look at this. And they and they still held the African culture. Exactly. So it wasn't like us in America where we're trying to say, oh, no, we're not. They, they embrace it. They still have. Really? It, it, in America, they do? Oh, in America, you know. You know in America, it, it, I mean, to try to get people to want to come. It's like you have to like really. You have to really talk to. You got to really talk to them, man. Like and it's that. and it's uh and that's it's a uh, it's and I and like you said, it's not our fault. Yeah. Because it's how we were trained, how we were educated. Exactly. You know the the history in our education system is some garbage. Yeah. And it's taught us lies. 
uh, and unfortunately we believe them. Yeah. Um, it's shaped many of our identities. Yeah. So we don't want to, so many of us, not all of us, because a lot of us do. A lot yeah. of us are proud exactly. to come from this part of the world, but a lot of us are simply ashamed or want, don't want any interest. That's why I take the time to show this. So because somebody's going to need to explain, you know, to me all of the different things that you're saying. Exactly. You know, yeah. Exactly. And then, and then talking about this, what we also even see on the internet, it looks like, oh, the people over there want to come down home. But the truth is, that's what you're saying. Well, you a, lot of, a lot of us do. Yeah. A lot of us do want to come. But there's another seg segment of the population that's just new because we've been learning more. And more of us have been pushing back against the colonized establishment that's educated us. And then we're having to push back against the ignorance within our own community. Just trying to tell us, you know, don't, don't be bothered with Africa. You need to stay here. This is your, this is your home. And I tell them, I said, both are my home because of what the colonizer did. Exactly. I can claim that is Africa, right. yes. and I can claim yeah. America. Exactly. And so, and so, and, the, and if you look at my DNA, I'm a melting pot of all of it. So I have all of it going on. I have America. Uh, when when I say that, meaning actually there is no American DNA in there. Exactly. <laughs> no, you know what? It's 1.5. It's a very small percentage of indigenous. American DNA, but then the rest of it is European and primarily West African. Yeah. That is who I am. So, so I'm like, I, and if I've checked it, I come here, watch a, you know, watch a. That's like Hoppin' John in America. Oh, wow. So it's so black eyed peas and rice. You call it black eyed beans. Yeah, black we call it black eyed peas. Uh, jollof. jollof yeah. It's like red rice yeah. and jambalaya. So you see these connections. And cultural connections, the way we look, the way that we're built, the way that we... I mean, the way we understand and, and, and do things. There's so many similarities. I'm like, I don't know what somebody... Because there's so many, even culturally, even though we have different differences culturally, but there's so many similarities that when I come here, even though there's a difference, I feel connected. And that just may be me. I mean, that, that might just be me. I can't speak for every person in America. It's just me. And that's why... I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud of it. And, and, and I've done the research. I'm here. I'm here. A lot of the people are, don't want to come here mm -hmm. and they won't do the DNA because they got some other thing going on. They're yeah. afraid to find out because the DNA will dispel all the lies. It'll, you know. So anyway, my, I've taken over your tour. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> no so this was brought here by the British in 1872. So that's a kind of yeah, water reserve. And this source is from the rain. Uh huh. The past, when it rain, I assume it's the highest rainfall in Ghana. It rains, it's raining right now. Mm -hmm. It didn't even rain this time. It's raining right now, man. <laughs> yeah, so that's what they had. Now, currently, we, that's Gomez Tower. Okay. The man who died down there. Oh, that's his tower right there. That is where Gomez will Le stand and then make some shoes. Some ladies. I already knew where you were going with this. Yeah. Seemed like a recurring theme. They keep recurring. They'll mean the like yeah. same thing. Now you know what's interesting? I'm of Spanish Portuguese descent. Oh wow. So I, I have Spanish Portuguese DNA in me. So that's why I say this it, it just keeps coming to life. Yeah. <laughs> it just keeps us like so the guy that's right here, buried, yeah. this was his spot right here. Yes. And he'd look down and say, I want to get the these women and bring them up and do his thing. Yeah. Wow. And these children who were born were used to bridge between Africa and Hill. Hmm. So the West Indian Company, for example, had a lot of stuff. At those days, as you were like the capital, it was fucking, they had everything here. Mm. The Dutch literally stayed here a lot. So when you look at these structures, some of these old structures were built by good merchants. Really? Who handed over to their servants who served them before leaving uh, to the various homes, destination or wherever. It's, it seems to applies to At least Lina. They didn't do like the French because the French would destroy at their places the french would like if they when they leave they would destroy it. whereas at least they left the structures here the dutch and the british and yes, yes. yeah the french has the french do have a when you study the french even in terms of colonization they had countries that they took as one of them yes you take like Cote d'ivoire yes you take like let's say haiti. Senegal. senegal or haiti they, they think they think that they see they tell the people before uh, independence that oh, this is your village but France is your hometown. Yes. So they had, and they have 
colonies like Mali, yes, if you take Niger, yes, they really more treated them because the people didn't accept. That's why you go to places like Mali and stuff. You, if you speak French, you find it very difficult to meet somebody in the street apart from the capital mm. who is speaking French. But in articles where I've lived before, that's probably that's where I was born. We've never learned any local language in school. Really? So you learn French? Yeah. And Benin and Togo and Burkina? And in, in Togo, they, yeah. they, they, learn, they learn their local language. They speak literally their local language even in, in town. Oh, wow. But in Côte d'Ivoire, Côte French, Ivoire is is French. French is the... Before their own mother land. Mm. That is how they have been saved. So I, that is how they have been deceived. Wow. The same applies. Some don't even don't know where even their own language. Yeah, that sounds... You no, know, like... like when we came to Ghana, we learned the local language. You're Ivorian? Yeah. Right, well, yeah. So you from Ivory Coast. Let me find Cote d'Ivoire. It <laughs> came creeping across these borders. It came creeping. Cote d'Ivoire came in here. Let me find out. Now, this is a church during the time of the Portuguese. So this was your Oh, a church. Another area. church. Mm -hmm. yes. What kind of church was this? If, if the Portuguese... Oh, okay, that's it. Now... Their church, they were more Catholic and the English were more Protestants than Presbyterian, the Church of England. Mm -hmm. church the English. truth is this I keep telling people that three, 30 years before the Portuguese started trading here, they came from people and they took them to Portugal and then trade them in their own language. Mm -hmm. So when they come with the gospel, the people, when they speak, they will translate it into the local dialect. Um, the ship that brought the people, some were missionaries, some also came for trading purposes. Mm -hmm. So whilst they came, they find it okay with their own people. Our people saw them to be good to trade with. But one thing I tell people that no European came capturing us to Europe. Now, Africa, or let's say Ghana was in Ghana at that time, then Zimis were on their own empire, the Santis were there, the Fantis, the Guans mention other tribes mm -hmm. we were fighting for our own land everyone was trying to conquer so when i come to this place and i fight and conquer the, the women and the children the men become our slaves but as one definition about slavery in africa a slave can be royal tomorrow and a royal can be slave mm. yes in africa just like that just depending, depending on where you are possess certain skills and certain things through marriage a slave can be royal mm. through certain skills like a warrior and stuff you can get married to the royal family because they need descendants of you okay so through that your descendant become royal and a royal can be a, a war captive and he becomes a slave wow but at the definition of slavery in the european definition is that once a slave you are forever a slave now when these slaves get captured they become the slave to the people so when these Europeans came, they had farms around and they said they needed people. And even to the extent that when somebody offends you, someone does something bad, instead of them to ban or kill the person, the European said, oh, don't kill him, bring it to us, we'll give you something in exchange. Mm, money, go so people something. saw that, no, if they did, and these people that we don't even find anything good out of them, we can exchange them for something. Now why don't we give it if they are demanding for the people? Right. Now, the truth is this. The black man, let's say the African, the one to use the word black, which is a bit of insult. The African never knew that behind the sea there was a land somewhere hmm. that his people will be taken there and work. Like the animals. Of their like animals. Yes. That is the only thing that makes the slave trade a kind of bad thing. Mm -hmm. But we were dealing in slave those days. Right, so you had your own form of slavery, yeah. which was different from, from the chattel people. slavery, yes. European chattel slavery. Until it got into the minds of the people, where the people said that this slavery thing is quite good. So the European gave guns to the people, mm -hmm. and they went now capturing women and children in their farms and bringing them to them. And they still give guns and drugs and everything to the communities and use to, in America, they have the prisons, oh, okay. and that's how they enslave even written into the laws, into the Constitution, slavery was not abolished. So you could use slavery for punishment for a crime. And so they would use these real small crimes and enslave people, imprison them for uh, small crimes and give them long sentences and long terms. And so that's that's what we have happening in America. And I'm sure it's happening in other countries like that. So, so we, we get it, we get it. 
So this is all of this right here. So this is the church right here. Yeah, this, this, this is Eliza Katongo. It's fourth. That is around the hills of the Lord. Yeah, my boy. 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 This is Eliza Katongo. It was built around the hills of Angora Beach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's called Total 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 and Fun Time and Cobra. Okay, that's how you spell it. Total and Cobra. That is Portuguese. Yeah, that's Portuguese. Okay. We have other maps of our coastal lines and we also have forts and castles that so these were all the ones along the coast yes all the different forts all the different forts all of those different forts along the coast where's uh, Elmina on here is Elmina on here anywhere so I, I think I'd come into this hilly area mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Elmina should be around this place okay the, the writings are we kind of faint right there. now that looks like there might be Elmina right there and then, uh, and of course, Cape Coast wasn't there because that was yes. built by the British. Wow! So the Portuguese had all of these dungeons and forts and uh, wow. A yeah. And so they would have church. They would have church in here. Yeah, this was the church. Well, when the British came, they converted it into a dining hall. So how how would they have church in here and have the people out there enslaved and all of that? What? Um, when I study anthropology in school, Elisha told me there's this man who's called Levi, and Levi said the black man is not qualified to be human because the black man has no soul. Mm -hmm. I've heard that before. So they see us not to be human. So it was okay, okay. within them to read the Bible, yes. to, preach, to preach, to do whatever they're doing, and to treat these people. But if they weren't human, why were they sleeping with them? So, so basically, they're beasti bestiality. They're sleeping with animals. Yes. So this thing has been there for ages. Since they see it's normal today, it's uh -huh. no more African. It's now animals. That's what I'm saying. So they, but so when they were sleeping with the women, yeah, and getting them pregnant, yeah, they, in their mind they were sleeping with animals. Yeah. Think about that. Think about how crazy it sounds. Yes. It's like they're sleeping yeah. with they're animals. Animals. Yeah. And having babies with animals, so what were the children in their mind? Yes. <laughs> yes. They have their own blood. Yeah. So for me, I see that this is a way of telling the African that you have no value. These are theories written by people mm -hmm. to put in the mind of Africans that we have no value. But before the European came, we were African. We had civilization in our own way. Okay. And when the African became to say, Let's catch up with the European. That's why they saw us to be a developing country because we are chasing somebody. But if you begin to say that this is ours, let's begin to develop what we started then mm -hmm. and improve in it. When they come, we will tell them that we are developed because Egypt was developed. Yes. When we take the old Ghana Empire, mm -hmm. when they had universities and great empires, it's all high. That's why when they came and they said that these people are rich. It's all high. It's all high. We have homes. Yeah. We have buildings. Our people were not sleeping on trees. Yeah. They were building mad homes, which shows that they had knowledge. And it was natural. They were yes. polluting the environment. They were not destroying the ecosystem. How about this? Washington, D.C. has been patterned in many ways. Like the Washington Monument yeah. after an Egyptian monument. Oh. So when you go to Egypt and learn about that, and then you go to Washington, D.C., you see how the architects of Washington, D.C. imitated from Egypt. It's, it's fast. I'm telling you, I'm telling you it's fascinating. It is fascinating stuff. But I mean, I always like to hear from the perspective of people here how you see it and how you understand it and then share it with how many of us understand it in America. Now, and let me, let me just be very clear. A lot of us are very knowledgeable. A lot of us are waking up. A lot of us are pushing back against a lot of the stuff that we've been taught in our history classes. So all of us are not stone crazy, you know, just thinking that this stuff didn't happen. We, a lot of us are saying, we're coming here. We're spending time in these spaces to be able to get a better understanding. And we're going back and researching and checking and doing what, what we have to do because there's this term called gaslighting. And you have gaslighting is basically where somebody tries to tell you that your reality is not your reality. And that's kind of what's happening with the colonizer and a lot of, of, of uh, African-Americans, if you will, 
um, they're being gaslighted and then they're trying to push that onto other people and they're trying to take this history out of the schools. Yeah. They're trying to erase it to say that it never happened. And so more and more of us are saying, no, you're not, we're not going to sit back and just let you take it away and try to act like it didn't happen. And so that's why you see platforms like YouTube and Facebook and Instagram where so many people are coming back and saying, hey, I need to go see for myself. I need to learn for myself. I'm not trusting what the media tells me. I'm not trusting what the, I'm, I'm coming to see. And that's why I'm in this space. That's why I bring people with me. You know, when they, when they look, I bring tours over so they can see, but I also bring people by way of social media and videos so they can see as well. Uh, and then if they decide they want to come, then they can say, well, you know what? I need to go see for myself. And so, you know, by you sharing this is, uh, is really good. Well, how do you think um, colonization impacts Africa? We, I've talked about how it's impacted African-Americans and Afro, you know, other people who are in the African diaspora, African Canadians, African Caribbeans. How do you think it's impacting Africans as a whole? So I would like to begin with, let's sure. just, to begin with, colonization impacted Africa in two ways. We have the positive side, we have the negative side. From my own perspective, from my own perspective, mm -hmm. the positive side of it enlightened us that there is another being from a different world coming here. Okay. So we get to know that we are not the only people on earth. Okay. That is one. <laughs> right, you get two, to know, okay. two, we also learn certain things that they have, which is knowledge, that they introduce to us. Right. Got so it. For example, I could say this modern style, the clothes, the type of building, their style of architecture, their, their lifestyle, that we also inculcated it into our system. But the negative side of it, mm -hmm. that is the bad side, to make the Africa not know its identity, that is very bad. Because if we don't know our identity, after having all this knowledge at the end of the day, it's vanity. Mm. It's vanity. Profound. That's a very profound word, profound statement there. It's vanity. That is the truth. We have kind of bombs here. Mm -hmm. This protect. Yes, protect from when the, that, the Portuguese were there, they had kind of bombs over there. Okay. They had I see. Over there, yeah, I see down here. Which are where they didn't want to have issues with the people in the town. Yes. But when the Dutch came, they also added some here. Okay. Protection. Just to make sure you had a little extra. Every time I go to one of these dungeons, I walk away with a different perspective or a newer perspective. And that's the value of going and seeing for yourself. No one else can tell the story better than what your own eyes can show you. Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on a children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do 
And as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa and they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.